Okay, so I'm going to run you through how to do the third and fourth parts of solid assignment question two, the Macaulay theorem thing. So we, the first thing you want to do is you want to set yourself up another a brand new free body diagram. Um, that way you're not dealing with all the mess that you've left on the other one from when you've been trying to draw your bending moment shear force diagrams. Um, and I also put in the the numbers for the values of the forces just makes it easy when you're trying to read off it you're not having to try and find sheets with P's and W's and sigmas or whatever you want to call them um, and then I've done and then once you've done that I've drew, drawn up some lines to each of the forces with the distance from the origin uh, make sure you also mark out your um, positive axis direction and the way you're going to take your moments it's pretty easy when you've only got one moment. Um, yeah, so once you've drawn up them, uh, we then want to write out our equation for Macaulay's theorem. Uh, you can look this up because this camera isn't all the best, so I've had to revert to using my tablet to sort this out. Um, you can find this on the blackboard. Uh, write that out, and then once you've done that, you can. Um, Decide which ones, which of these variables you need, which ones you don't. Uh, this first one here, you probably can't read it, but uh, MOX squared on 2. Uh, this is for if you have a moment at the origin, like I do, because I'm taking my forces from here. Uh, that's where my X starts. So I will have a value for that. I don't have any shears at that point, so I don't need that one. I have no more moments in my diagram, so I don't need that one. The rest, yeah, I've got shear forces and I have distributed loads. So then next. So next up what you want to do is then you take this equation and then you put in your values for it. Now this is ridiculously annoyingly blurry. So uh, what you want to do is I have my first moment here, my moment of the origin, uh, this one up here. So it's C2 times 10 to the pot, 32 kilonewton meters. So I've written it in here as C2 times 10 to the 3 x squared on 2. Um, then the next one, and then you start putting in your shear forces. So I've got this. Well, this is my first one here. Make sure you pay attention to which way the force is going, whether it's positive or negative. Uh, this one's three two one five zero, uh, and then in your brackets you've got x minus one point five to the power of three over factorial three. Uh, this is because this point, if it x hasn't reached one point five yet, this force has no effect on the beam. Um, so then you follow for the same. Uh, your next force, my next force is 44 times 10 to the 3 x minus 6 to the power of 3 over factorial 3, uh, which is this one here. Uh, so you do all your shear forces first before you move on. We do your moments if you have moments. Um, so, yep, as you can see, this is 6 meters away from the origin. So that's why it's x minus 6. Uh, then you put in your just, and then once you've put in all your shear forces, you put in your distributed loads. Uh, which I have 24 times 10 to the 3 x minus 4.5 to the power of 4 over 4 factorial. Um, this will account for the distance from here to here. Now I've noticed that some people have some trickier ones where they have to add like a whole beam full of um, distributed load and then subtract some so that they end up with what they want. Um, I don't have this problem. Um, there's an example on the EWB Facebook group if you wanted just if you have that problem. I didn't spend too much time trying to think about it. Um, then we derive this equation uh, to get V dash X, which will ultimately be our slope equation. Um, so obviously your V zero disappears and you end up instead of having uh, theta zero X, it now just becomes theta zero plus I and E and then these all drop one. So my moment um, drops from x squared on 2 to just 32 times 10 to the 3x. Uh, so I've lost an x and I've lost the divide by 2 because you know, you're know you deriving it, you should be able to do this, this is basic maths. Um, so yeah, things like your 3 factorial and 4 factorial will drop down to 2 factorial, 3 factorial. Um, I've simplified mine out a bit, I've gotten rid of the factorials just simply by dividing the dividing the top half of the forces by it just makes it a bit neater 
Um, so yeah, your distributed loads lend up to the power of three and your shear forces lend up to the power of two. Uh, once we've sorted that, uh, we come down and then we set our boundary conditions so that we can find uh, VO and theta O. Um, so obviously there's going to be no deflection at your supports. Uh, my support's located at 1.5 meters and 8.5 meters, which is where the deflection is going to equal zero. So from there, uh, we can write ourselves a set of simultaneous equations. This is my first equation here, uh, when x equals 1.5. So as you can see here, there's a fair few zeros here. Because um, the way these equa this equation works is that um, I have x, so x equals 1.5. So I'm going to get something for my moment here. Uh, it's then 1.5 minus 1.5x, because x equals 1.5, so that makes it zero. So that equation isn't counted. And then the rest of these equations will all give a negative value because there's, your x is smaller than what you're subtracting away from it. In this case, we just disregard them and count them as zero. Um, so that's why we have all the zeros here. We don't have negative forces. They're just non-existent. Um, if you think about it, how far you're going 1.5 meters along the beam. So we're coming, we're looking at here. Um, you know, so if you were to chop the beam here, None of these forces are going to do anything other than non-existent anymore. They're not negative. So that's why they equal zero. Um, so this is my equation one. My equation two is then when x equals 8.5. So you do pretty much the same as this. Um, you'll end up with a few more forces. Uh, but you just got to remember that if you know, because I have a force at 8.5, that now becomes zero. And my force at 10 meters also becomes zero, which is my shear right at the end here. Uh, your distributed load is alright because you're only putting in the value of which it's taking up. Uh, so then you end up with your second simultaneous equation. Next, you want to... Um, as I subtracted, I took equation 2 and subtracted number 1 into it. So I ended up with uh, 0 equals 7 theta 0. Uh, this eliminates the V0 plus EI on 2587.325 times 10 to the 3. Uh, okay. Yep. And once I've calculated that, um, the E value is given to you on the sheet. It's 200 gigapascals. So that's 200 times 10 to the 9. Uh, your I value is what you calculated before when you were designing the beam. Um, for mine, for my rectangle, it was uh, height to the power of 3 times the width divided by 12. Uh, you should. I ended up with an for mine. Uh, I ended up with a value in uh, to the power of ninety five. Um, I'm not sure what other people are looking for in theirs, but you want to end up with pretty small values, otherwise you're going to get really big deflections, which is not good. Uh, so for theta zero, yeah. So you just multiply them together and you divide the top. Uh, so for theta zero, I ended up with uh, negative zero point zero four four three radians. Um, and then once you've done that, you can just sub that, the value you got for theta O, back in to these equations here. Um, a good way to check is to do both equations, because you could, should end up with the same VO um, if you've done it correctly, which I have, but for the sake of writing it out again, I've only done it once. Um, so I've ended up here with uh, VO equals 0 0.0622 metres. Uh, okay, and so then the next step is to throw them back into you, your slope and your deflection or elastic curve equations. So these are the ones we started off with at the start, so like your uh, V dash of X. Uh, so you can fill them in now, so you put in your theta O, which is negative, which in my case is negative 0.0443, uh, plus uh, 1 on EI of you know, what you had in your brackets. So that, that doesn't change, that stays the same. Um, then in, in your deflection elastic curve, you have your V naught minus your theta naught times X. Don't forget times X. I've forgotten that a couple of times while I was trying to do it and mess things up. Um, plus your brackets again, your brackets don't change in that one either. Uh, next up, you need to calculate your deflection at point B. I'm not sure if point B changes on... Uh, the beams, but for mine, my point B was located at x equals 4.5, so this pretty much goes back to when you were trying to calculate 
um, your unknowns. You do it pretty much the same way. So, but instead you've got your unknowns here. So you've got um, so you calculate your deflection. Use your elastic curve deflection thing equation. Um, so that gives you 0 0.0622, which is your V naught, minus 0 0.0443, which is the theta naught times 4.5, which is my x value because you got to have times x. Uh, then you put in your x values to get your forces, and don't forget about the ones that are disregarded because they're not in the part of the beam you're looking at. Um, this then returned me a value of negative 0 0.0806 meters of deflection, which sounds about right um, because point B for mine is in between the two supports. So when you think about it, you should have a dip in the middle between two supports and the other two sides should rise. Uh, so this gives me about an eight, this gives me about an eight centimeter um, deflection. To me, that sounds pretty big. Other people have been getting things like 42 millimeters, 24 millimeters. Um, but I don't think mine's gonna get any better than that. I think I have done it right. Um, and then I gotta calculate then you need to calculate your slope at point C. Mine was right on the end of the beam at x equals 10. Uh, so you take your V dash equation, your slope equation that we've written out before, um, which will give you a, you'll have your uh, O naught, your negative 0 0.0443, uh, plus one on EI times your square brackets. Uh, so you just fill them out as normal. Uh, for me, I only had one force that was disregarded in this, entire equation here. Um, so once you've done that, you know, just go through it all. We should end up with small values, smallish values. Uh, return me a value of negative of um, 0 0.0324 radians. Uh, so if you're getting values like that, the best way to check is your V naught and your theta naught should be pretty small numbers. Um, if they are, then I would assume you're kind of on the right track because you don't want meters or like I had at some stage, hundreds of meters in your deflection or your slope. All right, uh, good luck. If you have any questions, just, I don't know, send me a text message, I guess.